Okay, so let's get into it. Uh, much like our other series, I'm just going to go ahead and save this document and reuse part of it. So let's go ahead and talk about the different array types. Now uh, you've seen in my first example here, I list out the main three types here. So we have associative, numeric, and multidimensional. So this first array type is numeric, or sometimes called an indexed array. And with a numeric array, your keys are numbers. So rather than in my first example where A is equal to introduction, B array types, etc., it would be 1 is equal to introduction, 2, 3, 4, 5. So while I explain what a numeric array is, we'll also kind of take a look at how to build an array. So to start out, we have to come up with a name for our array. And this is very similar to creating a variable. And for this example, I'm going to go ahead and use, uh, we'll create a list of people. And I'm going to use our radio show as an example. So I'm going to list out the hosts of our live speak radio show. And we'll start out by giving our array a name. We'll call it hosts. So hosts equal. And we're going to go ahead and use the array function to build this array. So if you're unfamiliar with functions, this is kind of the base syntax of a function. The function name followed by two parentheses, which usually takes values. So the values we're going to give this array are going to be the first names of each of our hosts. And I'm going to show you two different ways we can do this. So the first way is allowing PHP to go ahead and assign the keys for us. So here's our first value. Now we're also assuming that you understand how strings work and that they need to be within quotation marks and that you can use either single or double. If you're not familiar with how those work and why you would use one or the other or when to use one or the other, go ahead and take a look at our basics for PHP. So if I leave this as it is, we're gonna have an array that has one item within it. And this value, my name, is gonna be given a key of one. So if we continue by using comma, we can give another value. So there we've added our second host and, and his key will be two. So we'll go ahead and add our third host, which is John. So now we have an array with three values in it, and each one of these values, again, is given a key. Now this would be the equivalent to writing it out this way. So the only real difference here is that we went ahead and assigned the keys ourselves. Now what I could do here is usually when I list out the host, I list it by kind of who's been involved in the show longest and I didn't start the show. So I usually put Justin's name first. So when assigning the keys ourselves, we can do things like this. We can take this key here and change it to two and change Justin's here to one. Now in this short example, it may just be easier to rearrange them anyways, but when you're dealing with a very large array, something like this can come in handy. Now, If you're already familiar with how PHP reads variables as far as assigning them and reassigning them, the same goes for an array. We've just reassigned hosts, so we've actually overridden what we did here. So I'm just going to go ahead and change this to host1 and host2, just for example. Now you also noticed in my previous example that I kind of formatted this a little differently. When you're doing a quick array like this, this might be the, you know, kind of inline might be the best way to do it. It's, you know, it's, it's legible and uh, doesn't take up a lot of room. But when you get into an array that has a lot of values, sometimes it might be helpful to go ahead and give each one a line. So let's go ahead and just give an example of that. So I'm just going to copy this line here, control C, control V, change this to three. And we'll go ahead and just kind of format this a little bit. So there you go. This might be a little easier on the eyes. However, it accomplishes the same thing as both of these do. Now I will note that when writing out this way, one of the very common syntax errors is adding a comma at the end of the last value. So 
So if you end up doing this, you can end up with an error. So, you know, watch out for that. If you, if you end up having errors when you're working with arrays, that's one of the first things you might check out is make sure you didn't put a comma there because then it's anticipating that you're going to give another value. The next array type we're going to look at is what's called the associative array. Now, this is very similar to what we've just done. The only difference being that, one, we assign the keys ourselves always, and two, we're allowed to use a string as the key rather than just being limited to numbers. So in this first example, again, we had done an associative array here. However, I just use single letters as the key. So let's you know, better illustrate that here. Following the same example, we'll go ahead and use the radio show again and our hosts. However, this time we're going to use the host's name as the key, and we'll use the duties they perform on the show as the value. So we'll call this duties. And we'll go ahead and format it like we did in host three. So array, get our parentheses. Make sure you always end that with a semicolon. And we'll tab out. And now our key Justin for the first key. And he is the host. And then comma Alan. I am a co host. John and he is a co-host as well and again remember not to put an extra comma there at the end so there you go we've created an associative array and that allows us to use a word as the key for these values now the third type I want to talk about is what's called a multi-dimensional array and we're going to dabble in these a little bit later in the series, but I want to at least introduce it to you first. So just like the examples above, we'll go ahead and use the radio show host as the example. And before I continue, I'll just give you a brief idea of what a multidimensional array is. Multidimensional array allows us to actually create arrays within arrays. And until you wrap your head around this, it can be a little confusing, uh, but these become very helpful as well. So we're going to follow kind of the same format as we did with the associative array, and we'll call this hosts equal array and our parentheses. And uh, some people like to put a space here. Um, I've done it both ways here, just as an example. Uh, it's not necessary. Uh, it works either way. So the kind of first dimension of this array is going to be just like the one above. We're going to have our host names as the keys. However, for the value of Justin, we're actually going to make another array. For these keys, we're going to go ahead and do call this first one duty. And give it a value of host. And we'll do location. So there we go. So we've created an array within an array. So now the Justin key has two keys associated with that. What he does on the show and where he's located. So we'll continue here. The comma. And we'll add myself, Alan. And to speed things up a little bit, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this and paste it. And change out the values. So I am a co-host, and I am in 
for Queen. And we'll go ahead and do this again. And do John. He is a co host and he is in Sligo, Ireland. Now we want to make sure that we eliminate the comma there because it's the last key. So there you have it. That is an example of a multi dimensional array. And like I said, we'll, we'll dig into these a little deeper and uh, give you a little more example of what these are capable of. Now you can also, again, format these however you like. I actually would like to keep these so that there makes a little more sense to me so we'll go ahead and save this and open up another example so now that we've taken a look at the different types of arrays let's go ahead and look at how we can use them so I'm just gonna go ahead and save a copy of this document